This is the uh, village of Manancourt, which is uh, a little town in between Drew and Evero, where I was <coughs> stationed. I had to go through this town every day on my way to work, so you can see why I bought the Simca. Kept the Packard parked most of the time. Uh, it's all we could do to get the Packard through these streets. These little villages haven't changed in hundreds of years. They're basically still the same. I see by a quick view there that we are in the Packard in this case. This is one of the sobering up stations they have every so often on, along the roads in France. They catch you driving drunk, they just throw you in there, lock you in there, and come back in about 24 hours and let you out. That's the punishment for driving drunk in France. And we're entering the city now of Evero. And here is a shot of the Huddleston's car. We were out in the uh, area around Drew for a drive one day. This is some of the hay fields, haystacks. And here we are at Lisieux. Is that and this is uh, uh, St. Teresa. Teresa's Basilica uh, in the uh, town of Lisieux. This was uh, somewhat of a drive from, from where we lived. I guess probably it took us uh, probably an hour, an hour and a half to get here. But uh, this cathedral was started before World War II, and at the time these pictures were taken. This was 1963, and the cathedral still is not completed. And you see they're building a tower, a bell tower, which is just outside the church. Here are some uh, shots from the catwalks that surround the church all the way up. Here's a shot from inside, but there was very little light there's some uh, light through some stained glass windows, but for the most part, it was uh, uh, very futile to try and get any pictures inside. This is a picture of the altar from up around the rim, but uh, the lighting was so poor that very difficult to make anything out. Looking from up on the church itself and one of the catwalks around it, we see it train passing through the train yard down there. We're looking down at uh, portions of the church and the yet-to-be-completed bell tower. This is looking out the back of the church where St. Teresa's uh, vault uh, is located. And the there it is. That's where she's buried up there in that little altar like we're looking down at some of the other catwalk walks below us this is the bell tower which is at that time was still under construction and very cautiously we look over the edge here to see what's going on below this is probably from the highest point that we could get on the outside of the church looking into the parking lot below and down into the city of Lisieux. During World War II a bomb hit the, the church and you see the point there sealed over now where the bomb went into the church itself but fortunately it turned out to be a dud. It never exploded. And the little village behind the church where St. Teresa was born and lived. And here we are now starting our descent, going back down to ground level. And we have uh, reached that level now. Debbie's getting her exercise in now. We're running around. 
And now we're walking out to the back of the cathedral to where St. Teresa is buried. And I believe these statues around here are the 12 Stations of the Cross. And this is her tomb. In the very back of the uh, back portion. And this is looking from her tomb to the cathedral itself. And you can see what a mammoth place that is. And there's some, the catwalks that we were walking around prior to our coming down. And we're walking down the steps from uh, St. Teresa's tomb and down to the lower level here where we find her mother and father buried and these two uh, grave sites here. It's April 1936, whoever that was. And here we are out along the Seine River in between Evreux and Paris. This is uh, La Roque. Oh, is it? I thought it was La Roque, no, La Roque. This, the rock is the liberal translation. It's his, uh, a spot where Rommel, when he took over the defense of France after the invasion started, he set up his headquarters here for a while. There's old fort ruins up on the top of the hill just above this village. And then, of course, we can look out over the countryside. And uh, down there amongst the trees is the Seine River. There's the Seine. See some barges on the river. This particular area is all limestone and uh, it's uh, riddled with caves for 20 miles or more on the north bank of the Seine River. People have actually built houses in these in these limestone caves. There's a shot of my Simca that we we're using on this particular excursion. Looking at some more scenes of the Seine River, and as I say that, of course, we zoom in on my Simca, which is parked in front of our house at this time. I was fortunate enough to take a trip to Berlin and this is the aircraft we flew into Berlin on from Evru. This is Tempelhof Air Airport. We uh, leave our plane and go by bus into the terminal itself. Some of the air traffic that was in evidence on that day. And this is looking out at the runways from the terminal itself. conveyor is leaving. This is the monument outside Tempelhof Airport uh, dedicated to the airlift that was conducted when the Russians blockaded the city in 1948. These are some of the buildings in Berlin, some of the monuments. And we took a uh, tour into East Berlin. This was the bus that uh, we rode on. 
I believe this is the Reichstag building. This was the um, Opera House in Berlin. This is on the, just going into the east. I'm afraid I don't remember what that uh, building was. Here are some of the, just the normal dwellings. A church in East Berlin. Notice how bare the streets are. And this is a Saturday afternoon. Now we were allowed to go to this Russian cemetery which was constructed in East Berlin. And uh, it consists of nothing more than mass graves. So many soldiers were put in each grave. Of course, the uh, monuments here, and the, all depicting Russia, the Russian flag, the Russian insignias, and so forth. And uh, wherever you see these square uh, cement uh, blocks laying out on the ground, it's a mass grave. Some more buildings in East Germany, in East Berlin, I mean. Well, East Germany, too. And this is a Saturday afternoon, and uh, the amount of cars and people on the street, unbelievable. There's hardly anyone there. There's Hitler's bunker, it's where he was when he committed suicide at the end of World War II. This, I was told, is a bank, although there have been some people that disputed that by the name. Checkpoint Charlie is what we're looking at now. This is one of the crossing points from West Berlin to East Berlin. There you see part of the wall and the other fortifications, anti-tank traps and so forth. Here's another view of the wall with the barbed wire on top of it, which runs did run through the entire city of Berlin. This is looking at the wall, a closer shot of it there, and extending through the middle of the city. Once again, we're looking at Checkpoint Charlie, the small opening where vehicles and the smaller opening where people pass through from one side to the other. There's some tank traps, barbed wire, more of the wall at Checkpoint Charlie. You can see there's no activity whatsoever right now. I believe Kennedy gave a speech in front of the Brandenburg Gate, which we will see here in a moment. Here's Kaiser Wilhelm Church, or what's left of it. It's, uh, suffered quite a bit in uh, World War II. This is one of the victory statues in uh, Berlin, probably celebrating the Franco-Prussian War. All of those crevices along the sides of that monument were filled with brass cannon barrels at one time, but during World War II, Hitler had them taken out and melted down to be used as scrap metal for his war effort. Here we are looking down at the Brandenburg Gate. Uh, I don't recall the name of this avenue. And this is a Russian monument in West Berlin. And there's a couple of Russian tanks. This is one of them mounted on a cement base. There's the other one. And this was built primarily so the Russians would have an excuse to send their uh, detachment of troops in there every day to change the guard and so forth. Here's a shot of the Brandenburg Gate. This is in the British zone of occupation, or was at the time this was taken. You can see the Russian flag flying on the other side of the wall. This wall had not been up yet a year when these pictures had been taken. As you see there, did nothing more than slabs laid on top of each other. Uh, as the years went on, the, the wall was more sturdily built. And just beyond the wall is the Brandenburg Gate. And looking into East Berlin, where there are 
appears to be absolutely nothing. These are some of the guards on the western side of the wall in front of the gate. These particular guards are German policemen. However, this is the British sector of Berlin. Here are people going up to an observation deck that enables them to look over the wall and into East Berlin. And this is a shot taken from that same observation deck. This is where Kennedy made his speech right in front of this wall. And during the time he was speaking, the Russians hung red curtains in between the pillars and the Brandenburg Gate. so that nothing could be seen beyond the gate itself. It's more of the wall. This is uh, West Berlin. The next day, and compare the traffic here with what we saw the previous day in East Berlin. This is on a Sunday. We're back at Tempelhof Airport again. That's our plane parked out there on the runway, which we will be going out to shortly after this was taken to return back to Everu. We're on Everu Air Base now. This was the organization I was assigned to 2172nd and uh, on our air base we flew both flags the American and the French this is the NCO club at Drew Air Base we were about 17 miles from Drew 30 miles from Everu we were taking a vacation going to Dabo in southwestern France, near the foothills of the Alps, and on our way we stopped to do as the French do, and that is when it's time to eat, you just pull off and put down a blanket and eat by the side of the road. These are poppies, wild poppies growing in the field, and this is our little picnic area that we selected. Certainly looks like a pleasant enough spot, doesn't it? We took the Simca with us this trip. And I could use a nap now after that fine meal. I wonder what she's looking for. We out our hotel window in Davo itself. This is the foothills of the Alps in southwestern France near the Swiss border. And some of the hilliest terrain that we saw all the while we were in France. This is looking out another window of our room down at our Simca, sitting down in the parking lot. This is what we were surrounded with in our chalet, I guess you'd call it. Here's Debbie looking out the window. And uh, believe it or not, we have cows, just a stone's throw away. pile into our car to go off and see the sights and the surrounding area. I guess this is the most trees we saw all the while we were in France also. Very, very nice area. Very pleasant. Typical road.
appear very close to the Swiss border at this point. The dirt here had a reddish color to it, something similar to what you see in Georgia in the United States. You can see the different uh, levels of trees where they have been cut down and replanted, the different stages of development. Uh, strong sense of con conservation replenishing so forth here's a little village that built primarily on a hilltop off in the distance you see our objective is a, a church just outside of Dabo that is up on a rock formation and uh, we're getting a little closer to it every block of stone that went to build that church was carried by the people of the village up on top of that rock formation to build that church. Here is the little city of Dabo directly beneath the church we're going up to see. Now we're quite close to it. We're down below the rock itself looking up at the church. It's not a very big church. It's quite small. But uh, you can imagine the effort that the people had to put forth to, to construct it up there. It's one of the little shops down at the base of the rock. And here are the steps leading up to the church itself, which go around the rock base itself. Steps are quite steep, as you can see here. Overhanging rock ledge. And this is looking down on the village of Dabo from the location of the church. This church can be seen from miles away. And now we have just about reached the top of the steps. And here is the church itself. You can see it's not really all that big. has one steeple. And I would say probably inside was room for what, 35, 40, maybe 50 people at the most to worship. Here we are on the steeple of the church. This is the very top of it the weather vane and other paraphernalia that's at the very top. And we're looking out over the countryside, which you see for miles, Debbie doing the twist. <laughs> there wasn't much room up there either. It's very small. And here we are winding our way down the winding staircase, back down to the bottom of the church itself, and we're looking at uh, the scenery from the top of this gigantic rock that uh, the church is built on, looking down. And uh, Gloria was a little concerned about me getting too near the edge, so I thought I'd jump. <laughs> Today, I wouldn't go within 10 feet of where I am right now. <laughs> that gives me the craziest look at that. I it's straight down. My wife caught in the act of littering. down the stairs to get down to the where the shops and souvenir places, restaurants are, and uh, subsequently to the parking lot to our car. 
Now we're in Strasbourg, which is very near the German border. And here is a famous cathedral in, in Stra Strasbourg. This one is also called Notre Dame. And uh, as luck would have it, while we were there, they were refurbishing much of it. And uh, this has a beautiful clock inside that tells you about everything except the time. Well, I guess it tells you that, too, if it was working. But uh, these... This is where my fear of heights caught up with me. Yeah, this is one steeple that we couldn't get... Uh, I couldn't. You all did. Well, we couldn't get you to climb. This is down on the street in front of the cathedral itself. There's a gargoyle. And here's where she decides she's not going to climb any further. And as it turned out, once we got to the upper level, before we even went into the steeple itself, we couldn't get into the steeple because of the reconstruction work going. So the best we could do was walk around on the top of the nave and look out over the city of Strasbourg which is in uh, the province of Alsace which at one time was part of Germany here is a French peasant with her oxen pulling her cartload of hay this is the hotel that we were staying in and uh, I don't recall now if one of those windows was our room or not. I kind of think we were down on the end, on the corner, because we had a view out the other side also. Tremendous food. On our way back to Drew, uh, this is a town of Sarborg, also in Alsace, which at one time was part of Germany. This is a French aviation school in this particular community. Some of the cadets marching to uh, eat a meal. I think one of them turns to look at us here. Yeah, yeah, last guy there. And one of the officers waved. And this is at, uh, I believe this is uh, town of Soissons. Here is a um, <coughs> uh, statue here in this area in front of this building of uh, someone called a Sal. And I have a postage stamp from France with this exact same statue on it. Uh, the significance of the whole thing, I'm, who LaSalle was and what he did, and I, I can't tell you, but uh, this particular statue was located in the town of Soissons. And uh, according to the sign, the best we could figure out, they were going to have fireworks displays in the near future. Here is a tug along, I don't know whether this was the Marne or the Meuse, one of those rivers. I, we stopped along the way coming home at this village. This old lady standing on the bank there is trying to entice these cows out of the water and back into the barn. Evidently it was milking time. And the cows aren't really paying much attention to her. At least they're not moving very fast. And at last this other woman comes up, much younger woman, possibly the daughter of the older woman. And uh, she gets some response out of those cows. Brain Court was the name of I knew we'd have a sign here somewhere. Another monument. The country is full of them. And this is a church up on a small hill. Here is a field of poppies, wild poppies, which are all over northern France.
Well, this is my sister Irene came to visit us with her girlfriend there. 